Hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. We're back for another episode of Workforce Wednesday, and today's episode is going to be really exciting. I'm here with Renee from Lackawanna College. They have some really cool career opportunities available for all of us um, looking for jobs. So um, let's jump right in. Hi, Renee. How are you doing today? Great. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us on your program this week. We're excited to share what's going on. Yes, you're such a big part of our community and such a staple to, to the Scranton area. So I'm really excited to have you here with us this week. Um, so tell us a little bit about Lackawanna College and its history and role in the area. Great. Um, we, I think we have a great history. You know, we have, uh, we're one of the oldest educational institutions in the region. Uh, for more than 125 years, we've been empowering students uh, to become the next generation of leaders in the in the area and in their industries that they go into. Um, we, we were formed, the college was formed in 1894 um, and its mission has always been to provide quality education to all persons who seek to improve their lives and better, better the communities in which they live. Um, and while our mission has remained consistent, um, we do continuously adapt to the changing needs of our students in our community and what the local labor markets are looking for in order to achieve it. Um, we are a nonprofit institution. And while our focus has traditionally been on offering two-year associate degrees, I think that's what most people still know us as. Um, in 2017, we actually expanded and we now offer bachelor's degrees. And we also continue to offer various certificate programs, as well as um, we have a competitive training institute, a lot of workforce training uh, programs that go in it. Um, the college, we, we, we really um, pride ourselves on being able to offer education you know, in, in smaller focused uh, class sizes, which allows for personalized attention to our students, especially you know, those that are needed. We have an extremely passionate faculty. Um, we have a progressive curriculum. We offer innovative programs. Um, we've added cutting edge learning studios that better um, prepare students and put them in an environment where learning comes a little easier for them. Um, we also have unparalleled student support services and an active student life community that deepens the college's, uh, the student's experience. So, you know, I, I put our student wellness and support and engagement teams up against anybody. Um, we've got a really fantastic team that understands the needs of the students and, and helps them, you know, throughout their, their time with us. Um, we also um, place incredible importance on being an affordable option and not mm -hmm. sacrificing quality, but becoming an affordable option for individuals who want to go back to school or continue on and um, get their degree with us. Um, and we continue that even when we, that affordability, even when we went into bachelor's degree programs. Um, you know, our role in Scranton, we, we are proud to be a significant part of um, Scranton's history. Um, and we are very eager to, you know, be part of the future as well. We think there's a lot of great things to come, and we certainly, you know, want to be that partner for the city to help us get there. Um, our main campus is located downtown um, in Scranton. We purchased and renovated the old Scranton Central High School. Uh, many people still know the building is that. We'll have people come in, um, say, "Well, I went to high school," or some, you know, my parents went to high school here. Mm -hmm. um, and I love being right across from the library. It's an incredible building as well. But we renovated this building and uh, we also have several other buildings in about a four block radius um, that we've been working on. In addition to our Scranton campus, we have some satellite centers. Um, we actually have five. We have uh, a satellite campus out in Holly. New uh, we have one in Hazleton. We um, have our school of our School of Petroleum and Natural Gas has been housed in New Milford, but we're actually in the process of relocating. Um, we're adding a new center in Tonkanic, so we'll, we'll have our traditional center, but we'll also be offering our school, uh, we'll be moving our school of uh, petroleum and natural gas to operate out of that as well. Um, and then we're also located in Sunbury and in Tawanda. Um, and finally, uh, yeah, we, we're continuing to go. We, we also have an environmental education center out in Covington Township. Mm -hmm. So expanding and growing, but you know, Scranton is our home. Wow, I love hearing all of this. It really shows how ingrained and how much you care about 
our community, the students that you're um, educating, and also I'm sure that carries over into your staff and um, employees as well. Absolutely. And just feel your passion for what you do and all of the um, options and things that you offer. So tell us a little bit more about how those things that you just described translate into your company culture for your employees. I, I love working here. I, I tried, you know, I can't hide it. I, I you know, I, I love our employees. Um, and I mean, I love our students too. I always tell people, I, you know, being in HR though, I'm probably the one department who's not focused first on the students. You know, my job is to focus on the employees and, and we have amazing employees here we, at, at, in all positions. Um, you know, we try our, our culture, um, you know, we look for individuals who are curious and creative. Um, and it can be either or, I am not creative, but I'll ask a lot of questions. <laughs> uh, so I am curious on how things work. I won't come up with the idea, but um, you know, we, we look for, you know, we are collaborative. You know, we have so much overlap in, you know, how things, um, one job or one department impacts another and how we're all working together towards our mission um, and focused on that student or on that community. So we, we are a collaborative culture. Um, we are innovative. Um, I'll probably talk to that a few times throughout here. Um, our president um, in her last role, and she kind of still hangs on to the title, was actually in addition to being our executive vice president, um, you know, had the title of chief innovation officer. I mean, we certainly embrace the fact that you need to keep thinking. You need to mm -hmm. keep challenging yourself to do better. Um, you need to keep assessing, are you, you know, are your services relevant and are they, you know, doing what you need them to do? Um, so, you know, looking for that, you know, that those type of things together. Um, we are, we do expect, you know, high performance. Uh, you know, we are, you know, kind of all, you know, kicking into high gear and, and trying to, you know, stay, <clears throat> excuse me, stay ahead of the curve. Um, our culture, we embrace change. We, we look for individuals that embrace change um, and lifelong learning. You know, we encourage questions. You know, we Often we, we look for opportunities or we look for employees who want opportunities to expand their knowledge. It doesn't always mean leave the job you're in, um, but you know, ones again, going back to that curious curiosity, you know, asking questions um, and realizing that you can learn. I mean, I've been in HR for 25 plus years. Um, God, I don't like saying that, but anyway, for a long time. And, you know, I still know, I mean, I, you know, there's areas that I'm comfortable in, but there's still a lot I don't know, you know, things change, my, the field changes. So I think that learning, that lifelong learning and always knowing that, you know, what you know today doesn't necessarily apply tomorrow, or you know, you're always looking to do more. Um, we're also, we strive to be transparent. I know everybody says that it's, a, you know, a key word, you know, it's, it's nice to say, but we do try to communicate regularly um, and openly with our, our employees. Um, you know, currently we're working on our institutional strategic plan and, you know, we cab while well, cabinet created an initial draft, we're in the process of holding focus groups with all employees, that all em employees were invited to attend um, to get feedback and help shape what this plan is gonna look like and where we're going in the future. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think that, you know, from that perspective, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to see what the final pro process will look like because we are, you know, getting that feedback from employees and they'll help um, drive a better product really and, and a better plan at the end. Um, we like to have fun. Um, and as I said, you know, well, you know, other, I try to really come in and focus on how do we make things better, you know, better from an employee perspective. And so, um, you know, my team is, you know, is, is focused on the employee experience. We try to hold various events throughout the year to let them know how much we do appreciate everything that they do um, and that we recognize it. So, you know, over the past few years, we will bring in an ice cream truck, you know, in August and set it up in the parking lot, or we've done, we celebrate Pi Day, um, you know, certainly. And that was something, of, you know, an employee recommendation. I'm like, great, I love it. You know, so you go, went and bought out some of the stores of their pie supplies and brought them in and had employees come over for pie, right? Um, you know, we've done things where we've made up a snack card and, you know, wheeled it around. Here's the HR department coming in, wheeling around a snack card. So we try to break up the day and really have fun. Um, but I guess at the end of the day, you know, for me, from the culture standpoint, probably one of the most important things is we believe in each other. You know, we, we really do. We can, um, you know, Dr. Murray, who's our president, you know, sent me an email a few years ago and I just, I keep it and I keep going back to it. You know, even then, you know, she's like, 
we can create, we can do, we can accomplish anything we set our minds to. Like that's the belief, you know, everything is possible. Um, and we do believe it. And we believe that of our employees. So, you know, for me, that's the culture is nothing, you know, think big, you know, go out there and do it. I love the amount of inspiration and motivation talking to you about this culture um, gives me as a yeah. person on the other side of the screen. Um, it, it really sounds to me like your employees, you really understand their strengths. Like you said, you're the curiosity, right? And somebody else can meet your other half and be the creativity. Um, understanding the strengths of your employees, really working to hone those strengths and help them to become what they want to be um, and being part of something bigger than themselves is um, a fantastic offering in a career and an employer. Yes. And like I said, I have a lot of work to do, you know, still discovering, you know, how mm -hmm. I can, you know, help people really get to their full potential and, you know, open up paths for them to do more or, you know, expand their, their learning and, and uh, their skill set. So, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And to go off of that, recognizing, like you said, that lifelong learning that yes. um, there's always going to be something more to learn. Um, I feel like sometimes a lot of job seekers or employees feel like they have to know everything or they're afraid to ask those questions or they're um, afraid to admit that, you know, hey, I'm not really that familiar with this or this really isn't my strong suit. So knowing that you have that open dialogue, that transparency as part of your culture, so that way um, people can come and talk and ask those questions and be afraid to learn those new things um, is really powerful. No, I always, like I said, mistakes get made. It's why it's how you learn from them and, and what you take away from them that, that really matters. So I try to, you know, reach out to employees and make sure they feel that way too. Awesome. So let's dive a little bit deeper. And what positions are you hiring for right now? Um, so right now we're, we're focused on looking at, you know, we have some immediate needs and we're looking, we're also looking ahead to the fall. So, um, you know, we're, we're really focused on finding some adjuncts to help teach a variety of different courses. Um, you know, the majority of our adjuncts are working professionals who really just enjoy and love working with our students and getting them to know, getting to know them and to share their experiences with them. Um, and they really have a tremendous impact on our students as well. Um, so, you know, we, we are um, trying to fill, you know, still trying to staff the rest of the classes for the fall with adjuncts, um, you know, for the people that we're hiring into those roles. Um, you know, we do offer some uh, support systems for them to be successful. Um, and, you know, for example, we'll, we have a center for teaching and learning um, that's ongoing learning for our faculty, and that extends to our adjuncts as well. And our e-learning department has a robust training program for anybody who's going to teach online courses to go through to help them be ready and, and prepared to teach as well. Um, we continue to expand um, our health science programs which offer pathways to higher paying positions in you know, nursing and sonography and uh, physical therapy assistance and occupational therapy and search tech. I think I might be missing one, but um, you know, so we were looking for individuals in those fields that would be looking to maybe help us out for a couple hours a week in lab, you know, as, as lab, you know, to help the students as they're going through their labs and learning their hands on. Um, mm -hmm. you know, those types of positions also give you an opportunity to you know, help train your future coworkers, right? Or who knows, maybe your boss someday. So like, you know, it's really kind of, you know, taking your knowledge and, and your expertise and being able to share it with others, in, you know, in a meaningful way. Mm -hmm. um, we're currently looking to fill two marketing and communication related positions. So we have an opening for our director of marketing. That um, person would own the strategic marketing plan for the college, um, as well as ensure our digital and traditional marketing efforts, you know, meet the needs of the college. Um, and we're also looking for a sports in information and marketing director. So that position kind of works, is aligned with the director, but actually reports into our athletics department. So they're covering, you know, the write-ups on any of our athletic events and sports teams, but also highlights. We do a podcast. So it's more of the marketing just dedicated to our athletics area. Um, other than that, I mean, we have, you know, we're looking for an administrative assistant position in our student engagement team. Uh, it's an entry level position. Um, we're actually doing some outreach even through our alumni um, organizations. And that's a great entry level position to get in to learn more. And it's a great department. Again, that's kind of student focus of, you know, during the semester, anything they need to help. Um, 
and um, some of our centers. So outside of there, some very in Tunkhannock uh, and Hazleton are looking for enrollment specialists. So those are positions that work with the colleges or look, work with the local high schools um, and then you know help help um, identify incoming students and help them through the process of financial aid and getting ready to be students at the college. Mm -hmm. So there's some of the highlights. Yeah, it seems like you really have something for like everybody at this point. Yes. You have a variety of locations, you have a variety of skills, you have a variety of interests. So mm -hmm. that's neat. Um, so let's dive a little bit deeper into that. Can you explain more about the skills and requirements um, and experience that you're looking for um, across those positions? So obviously each one would have different experience requirements in terms of you know, degrees we're looking at, whether there's an educational component or background or experience. Um, mm -hmm. But for us, the most important aspect that goes across all of them is alignment with our mission. Um, again, we're looking for applicants who are community oriented, who are collaborative and innovative. Again, that intellectual curiosity and you know, helping us move along from that path. You know, we look for somebody that believes in the power of education and its ability to transform and change the lives of our students and our community. Um, you know, having that impact and, and offering people a way to better you know, themselves um, and their families. You know, we're not a traditional higher education institution. Um, you know, our students typically need more guidance or support. Um, and most importantly, they need somebody who's going to believe in them. And mm -hmm. so we offer that. You know, we offer that. We offer those services that help get them college ready. That help. Um, you know, when they're here, we have tutoring. You know, services. We have just people they can talk to. Um, you know, we have our advising staff. We have. Um, our student success, we have a team called, you know, that's student success. It's, it's you know, it's about making them better um, and helping them achieve their goals that they set out at the at the start. And so, you know, for us, you know, we offer those support, that support. We're looking for people that are, that, that share that belief with us that everybody deserves that chance, that everybody can do better. Um, you know, and that's not always just in, you know, regular normal business hours. Our student wellness team, I mean, they, they get calls and, you know, they're there, they know the students and, you know, sometimes they're the only one they feel they can call. So for us, you know, it's looking for, for me, the, the most critical component is that mission fit and that belief that education can play a role um, beyond providing a degree and a pathway, you know, from an employment standpoint. Right. Um, so, um, can, are there any other attributes that you wanted to mention in regards to what might make a candidate successful in these types of positions? Let me think. If not, that's okay. You said think, a lot. No, I know. I know. I know. That's why I'm trying to think today. I, I think it's a combination, like I said, of my earlier answer, you know, in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, our culture and what we look for, um, as well as, you know, what we just, you know, that, that, that mission fit on, on top of everything. Yeah, looking absolutely. to learn and, and, you know, looking to, you know, be that, you know, be the, the co-worker that you want mm -hmm. everybody, you know, to you know, the right, the right kind of co-worker, the right kind of mentor to, to a student or, you know, to someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. And that plays back into what you said in the beginning about that teamwork and collaboration, right? The, yeah. if you're, you have to be supportive, you have to be collaborative and um, have that mentorship and guidance and, um, be able to to offer that when appropriate. Yes, that's fantastic. So, um, what are some of maybe the challenges that somebody in these positions might face? I think that if you are somebody that cannot adapt easily or you know handle change, and mm -hmm. <laughs> we're probably not the right place for you, especially right now. Um, you know, we are constantly striving to do better and meet the ever changing needs um, of you know, our students in our communities. So someone who's looking to just come in, you know, work their schedule, go home, you know, we, we have fewer and fewer of those type of positions, you know, available. We, we just, in order to, you know, continue to exist and, and really make the difference that we want to do, it is, it is a lot of change. Um, it's not change for the sake of change. I mean, there's, you know, I've worked in, in, that type of environment before where you don't even get to finish project one and they're on to project four and it's like mm -hmm. what's the point um you know we do 
um, you know, not everything we try is successful, but we're, we're always trying. Um, and so if you're not looking for that type of environment, that would be a challenge. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's probably what I can come up with there. Yeah, absolutely. I remember you said in the beginning that you're going to talk about this a little bit later, but innovation, right? So to yes. have that innovative attitude, I could only assume that you have to be constantly changing and adapting. So being able to go with the flow and really um, embrace that um, would be crucial at Lackawanna College. Yes, absolutely. Fantastic. So what about your wages and benefit packages? Um, I, I know that you're always named one of the best places to work. Um, yes. So I'm assuming they're competitive and right up there with everybody else's. Absolutely. You know, we're in the process of, you know, we, we look at things right now still in the total comp and we're in the process of doing more of a balance. Um, you know, but right now we, you know, we have a great benefit package. We have competitive salaries, um, but we have a great benefit package. Um, you know, our medical benefits, um, you know, we, we offer the, the traditional uh, medical benefits through Geisinger. Um, mm -hmm. We have a PPO and an HMO, and they start the first of the month following your hire. Um, I think what's unique is that we're, the college is funding 90 to 95% of the premium, um, which is, you know, pretty much unheard of. Um, doesn't, you don't see that much. So again, when I say total comp, that's where we, you know, we are today. Um, and, you know, so depending on what plan you're in, um, you know, that waivers, but we still, um, you know, we, we do that. And then we have a fully paid dental plan. So that's hundred percent by the college today and a voluntary vision plan. So that would be employee paid if they wanted to elect to, to go into that. Um, we offer the traditional, you know, life insurances and, and short and disability plans. Um, our retirement plan, um, we have a 403B that after 30 days, employees can start contributing to. If an employee match, if an employee contributes at least four percent of their pay, then the college matches with six percent. Um, and one of the things that we started offering last year that I'm really excited about um, is that we are offering financial planning services. Um, you know, when I first got here, the the services, you know, we'd get somebody on campus once or twice a year, usually once a year. Um, you know, they would take, you know, they'd meet with six people and be done, and that was kind of it. Um, we were able to um, join with partner with the group and we now offer full financial planning services. Um, it's more holistic. It's not just giving them advice about their retirement plan with us. They look at it in, in a broader scope with as much information as employees want to share. You don't have to do anything. Um, but the feedback has been tremendous, you know, from the employees. Unfortunately, you know, we, we just launched this last spring and then you know, there was plans for them to be on campus more. And obviously with, with COVID, we put off, we put that off a little bit, but there was still a lot of outreach. So I think that financial planning services is something that, you know, not everybody can get. Um, you know, we do have a generous vacation and, and you know, our paid time off policy, our program. Uh, we have 13 paid holidays plus um, the last two weeks of the year. Technically we, we close, but, you know, we, some offices have to be open a little bit to keep things going but um, they're usually a slower, more relaxing way to close out the year. Um, we have along, um, aligned with our lifelong learning um, model. We do offer tuition remission benefits for both employees and their dependents. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so they can go, come, they could get a degree from us and you know, tuition is, is waived for dependents. We also offer professional development benefits for people who either need you know, ongoing certifications or want to get an advanced degree that's related to their position. Um, and then the final fun fact is we do work in Scranton and everybody knows parking is a challenge, um, but we are able to offer free parking for our regular full and part-timers. And um, starting a year and well, probably two, close to two years now, we were able to get a lot and some you know, adjuncts on a first come first serve basis, at least we do have some reserve parking for adjuncts if they, you know, if the timing works out and that, Probably that's one of our biggest challenges too, I think from employees, otherwise was parking in the city is not easy, but we, we were able to offer that. Yeah, you had me at free parking, man. There you go, <laughs> see? You I know. cannot parallel park. So. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. But that's fantastic. And you mentioned all of those really nice options to be able to advance your degree or obtain yes. a degree. Um, so I'm sure you can use that professional development opportunity to leverage career advancement at Lackawanna College, right? Absolutely. 
Um, you know, we look to promote one in whenever we can. Um, I instituted a rule when I when I did get here that every job, even if we, you know, if someone is automatically going into it, I don't want to waste anyone's time. But you know, we we post internally every position. Um, you know, whether we think there's anyone internal or not, because who knows? There's things I I don't know everything about every employee, and and so maybe somebody has something in their background that we missed or we didn't think about. So we post every opening we have internally um and external you know even if they're not going to get external so that even if someone isn't maybe qualified that gives me the opportunity to know who's really interested in doing more it's just another way for me to you know get information or have the ability for employees to say you know to raise their hand and say i'm interested in doing something different mm -hmm. um i mean this year alone we've had four internal promotions um our president um, of the college, she was, uh, you know, I mean, her career, she was hired as the vice, pre the chief academic officer. She then became the executive vice president of the college and chief innovation officer. And then when our former president re resigned or uh, retired, out, he, she stepped in. And so, and her position was backfilled internally. So mm -hmm. I love being able to promote within, I mean, that's just for me as an HR person, that means we're doing things right. We're giving people the tools you know, sometimes you have to go outside and, and you know, for different reasons. Um, it could be that you don't have the internal skills or it could be that you just need a different perspective. Um, but whenever we can promote with internally, that for me is the preferred way to go. And so everything we can do to help develop um, our employees and, you know, get them to recognize sometimes the way, uh, sometimes advancement doesn't necessarily mean a step up. It could mean a lateral to round out your experience and help you because, again, going back to that collaboration or understanding how connected jobs are, um, that that cross training goes a long way in making you a better employee. Right. Yeah. And um, knowing that the person next to you um, who is an employee as well might also have been where you were at one point, it can offer that additional level of support or guidance or mentorship to you is really um, helpful. Yes. Yep. Employees know a lot more than people give them credit for. Yeah. <laughs> Just to ask. <laughs> exactly. That's and with your open door, honest communication, transparency policy, it, we're free to ask those questions. So that's yes. great. Yes. Um, so we talked a little bit about the training opportunities already. Is there anything else that we missed in that regard? No, I mean, we, we haven't, we, we try to, uh, one of the things we've started doing more recently is, you know, for new hires, um, my department works closely with the new hire to come uh, with the supervisor rather to come up with an onboarding calendar um, to make sure not only day one of onboarding is informative, but beyond that, we're giving people, you know, the right tools, we're connecting them with the right individuals. Um, and then, you know, we are in the process of, you know, trying to build a, robust, a more robust internal training that, you know, isn't the traditional come in, sit and listen to a, a somebody go through a PowerPoint and then move on. Like, how do we make those engaging opportunities um, and, you know, do things like lunch and learn. So we're, we're looking again, that constant learning, that constant, you know, change within my department. We're looking to continue to offer new training opportunities every day. Mm -hmm. So. That's really nice, because um, like you said, there, I guess there, there seems to be this sort of stigma around training opportunities where you mentioned, you know, they're, they're the boring, they're, you listen to the PowerPoint, so knowing that you're going that extra mile to try to make sure that um, you're valuing that employee's time, you're making sure that they get every single possible um, essential piece of information that they, that they can um, shows that you really, truly care about the employee experience. Um, so going off of that employee experience, what is your interview process like? What can somebody expect from the moment they submit their application all the way through the moment they might get that job opportunity? So uh, when, when somebody applies, um, it event, you know, ultimately the, the resume and application get to my department and someone on my team will screen again, you know, we'll review the applications and, and resumes against the qualifications for the position. Um, and then get those that meet the, the minimum requirements for the position to the hiring manager. At the same time, sometimes in doing that, we'll see something that stands out or makes us think about another position. So we try to keep that, you know, we talk about adjuncts. Sometimes we'll see something and say, 
you know, we know that there, we're always looking for adjuncts. Maybe we can get this to the division chair, you know, for a future opportunity. But generally, you know, we'll, we'll go through that initial screening. We'll get a, a group of, of all of the qualified app, um, resumes in front of the hiring manager. The hiring manager selects a committee, an interviewing committee, which is usually the hiring manager, the somebody from HR, and then we pick, you know, one to three individuals that this person would, that the successful applicant would closely work with, mm -hmm. and they become a part of the, the committee. So we will, they narrow it down, um, usually between five and 10 applicants, you know, at, at most for in, for in-person interviews. So HR will again, reach out to the applicant, let them, you know, tell them a little bit more about the job. If they're interested and tell them we're interested in having them come in, they're interested, they, they meet the first with that hiring committee. And that first step is really around, mostly around qualifications, obviously still talk missions all along the process, right? So we're always gonna be talking mission, but um, we give them more information about the job. We ask a lot of questions. We get a better sense of their background from the skills and knowledge aspect. And then um, that group gets narrowed down to the top two and the top two are put forth to a final interview. And that's usually with two people from, from cabinet. Uh, whenever possible, the president does participate in those interviews. And if not, it's, it's to um, other vice presidents who sit on cabinet that will do that. It's usually the vice president overseeing the area that the position falls in and then somebody else again, depending on, on the role. That conversation, that, that's more conversational than, than structured interview. But it gives us an opportunity to, you know, ask any follow-up questions and to really, you know, kind of look at that mission fit and and talk through how they see their impact on the organization. And then it's also I always view interviews as a two-way street, right? I'm interviewing, I might be interviewing you for a position, but you're interviewing me as well, you know, hopefully, because if it's a bad fit, we're both starting over and nobody wants to do that. So I, you know, it's a great opportunity for that person to think through what they learned in the first interview and maybe ask some questions and, and you know, how things fit in. Um, and then we make the, you know, we make the decision from them. Mm -hmm. So two part process, two and a half part process, I guess. Yeah, not bad at all. That's great. And what you talked about seems like a really empowering experience as well. Your attitude towards the interview that, you know, I'm finding as much information about the candidate as the candidate is finding as much information about me. A lot of job seekers might go into an interview and feel extremely nervous, like, oh, I have to, you know, make this employer like me, or I have to, you know, um, be perfect. But recognizing that you as the employer have the attitude that, hey, this employee, this candidate could walk away and maybe, you know, it's not a good fit for them, they realize that. Um, so knowing that, again, that open dialogue, that honest conversation, the ability to ask those questions to really make sure it's a good fit for all parties involved mm -hmm. um, shows that collaboration and that caring about just the candidates and the overall mission. Yes. Awesome. So going off of the interview, where can um, candidates apply if they're interested? So they can go to our website. Um, so we have, well, there's a couple things. You can um, email us at jobs at lackawanna.edu. Mm -hmm. um, you can go out onto our website, which is www.lackawanna.edu. Um, we do post our positions on the Chamber's website. So you can find out some of our opportunities there. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot, and most times we also use um, higheredjobs.com is the other Oh, that's great. Um, lots of different options and places to go to find them. So that's yeah. really nice. Absolutely. Um, awesome. Okay. So uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has really impacted education overall. Uh, yeah. It was virtual. It was in person. Now restrictions are starting to be lifted. So I'm sure, again, things are changing. We're adapting as best as we can. So how has Lackawanna College adapted to the COVID-19 pandemic to ensure that the staff and the students are safe um, while obtaining this high quality education? Um, so we did, a, we did a couple things. I mean, going back to the spring, I mean, obviously like everybody else, we were monitoring this, you know, starting, you know, before everything shut, everything shut down in March. Um, we had been monitoring this for close to two months prior as things started to ramp up. And we actually made the decision to close the college um, a couple of days prior to the governor making the mandate. So 
you know, we saw this coming, we realized where it was going. And so, you know, for the safety of everybody, we sent everyone home. And I still remember doing that saying, you know, at that time, you're we like, we're gonna send everybody home for eight weeks. And I was thinking, we'll be back before then. It's not gonna be eight weeks, you know, but we scrambled. We've got everybody laptops or tablets or everything so they can, you know, try to work from home. And, um, you know, because again, initially we weren't sure. And, you know, our public safety staff remained on campus, um, but everybody else was sent home. Um, you know, we made the decision to, to continue to pay everybody. Um, and I'm proud to say that we didn't lose any, but, you know, we didn't let anyone go because of COVID. I mean, some of the uh, federal aid we received helped with that. But even before we knew we were getting that, it was, you know, employee safety first, let's send them home. Don't worry about anything, we'll pay, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll tell you, it was amazing. You know, we were in the middle of a semester here. You know, we had just, <laughs> and to see the way that everybody stepped up, and I mean, everybody, I mean, our faculty, um, did an amazing, I mean, the amount of hand-holding students needed beyond the normal and to see everybody kind of step in and do what they wanted. We had people in other jobs who didn't have work to do off campus say, how can I help and work on student outreach? So it was really a great, it, the flip side of it being as bad as it was from a pandemic standpoint was, it was just another opportunity for me to just see how amazing this group of employees are, you know, and, and just everybody just coming together. Again, we hired right, you know, and everybody just came together, do what you needed to do, get these students through. And, you know, we wanted to make that as easy as possible. Um, so, you know, we communicated that plan to be offsite and, you know, then um, we kept, you know, we kept extending, you know, we knew it. So we, you know, even as people needed to come back in, you know, we were very careful in the beginning, especially we'd have, you'd have to call, you know, we didn't let anybody just in the building. We had public safety screenings. You did a temperature check. You did, you answered your questions that you weren't exposed. Um, and then, you know, we really tracked, we did additional cleaning, you know, throughout. Um, and then, you know, eventually we started to offer more of a staggered schedule. We're still not back hundred percent. We're hoping to be there in July, you know, mm -hmm. nothing changing. Um, but, you know, we, we had a safety pandemic, you know, pandemic safety committee that, that we formed and they met regularly throughout and made different recommendations. We followed all CDC and state guidance in terms of, you know, masks and screenings and uh, social distancing. We've got directional areas, all, you know, arrow signs all over the campus. Um, we do, we have thermometer checks. Um, we used a campus clear app. Um, so people had to attest whether or not they had any symptoms and be willing to show that to anybody if they were on campus. And we had somebody monitoring that as well. Um, we, you know, implemented an enhanced safety um, cleaning protocols, as again, most people did. We also, for additional cleaning supply, you know, for some employees, they just still wanted to be able to do it themselves. And so we got additional cleaning supplies in every office. So if you want to wipe down your office every night or when you come in, you know, here's, we'll give you the tool to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so we really, you know, we, we kept people, we put people out sooner. We kept them out longer. And even now we continue just to evaluate, you know, as we're bringing people back, you know, a lot of the safety protocols are still, you know, in place and we'll continue um, to be more cautious. You know, we kind of are over cautious in a lot of areas. So, you know, we're keeping people off campus if there was an, an exposure. You know, even now with the vaccine, you know, people say, well, I'm vaccinated. I don't have to quarantine. We just say, you know, look, we'll let you work from home for two weeks. Let's just be safe, safe rather than sorry. And, and that's been our approach. Right. Yeah. So we're, we're hoping to be back in the fall. So, yes, my fingers are crossed for you. Um, and it really yes. shows that you are doing everything that you possibly can to make sure that you can return your staff and your students safely. Absolutely. And that's just like a weight off your shoulders, right? Knowing yes. that you don't have to worry about going to work and getting sick or bringing it home to your family or anything like that. You're gonna be okay. Yes. That's awesome. So in summary, we talked about a lot of great things yes. at Sacramento College today, a lot of unique um, opportunities and career advancement and training and just the company culture in general is top notch. Um, is there anything else unique about working for Lackawanna College that you would like job seekers to know or why they should come and work for Lackawanna College? Um. Yeah, I'd like to, I'll be quick. I just want to share two quick examples. I think, you know, so I, you know, we are, we might be a smaller sized institution, but we think big. And so I think that, you know, we get to see the results too, which is nice, whether it's, you know, graduation every year is an amazing event. 
um, you know, it's, it's sad that we weren't able to do the in-person, you know, this year or last, um, but to see the graduates come in and, you know, know that we help get everybody there, that just reaffirm once a year, you're re reaffirming it in such a way, you know, it's just an amazing feeling, you know, and it, it makes it, you were able to see that. Um, but beyond that, you know, going to the mission, going to us being a community partner or making a difference, you know, we, you know, there's two programs um, that I think, you know, kind of highlight who we are and, and get what opportunity we give you as an employee, which is, you know, a few years ago, we realized that, you know, local high school students needed help affording college or just adjusting to college life, right, you know, and, and knowing what to expect. So we came up what you know, our president will even quote, you know, call a crazy idea, um, which, and as people told us we were crazy and basically giving our product away. But um, we came up with this idea that eventually became our level up program, which allows high school students to earn college credits at a fee of $100 per credit, um, or even earn as an associate degree while they're still in high school. And that program has been a huge success. Um, you know, we have, you know, it's, it's giving them an opportunity to either feel more prepared and not as fearful as going, or like I said, those that can't afford a four-year degree at the higher tuition, you're coming out with a degree, you know, for in around the $6,200 mark, and you, know, you got two years of college in. So, you know, if you're going to, and they transfer. So, you know, I know there was one person in, in the program that went to another um, to finish up their bachelor somewhere else, but, you know, we saved them close to $50,000 in tuition because they only have to go two years, not four because they've already got that in there. Um, this program, um, again, was a huge success. And earlier this year, we were actually even recognized globally by Fast Company as one of the most innovative programs in their corporate social responsibility category. So, you know, again, we might be small, um, but we take these crazy ideas and we figure out how to make them work. Um, and that's collectively, we start, you know, someone starts with the idea, you throw it up, it comes down as something different as, as Dr. Murray always likes to say. And, you know, we, you get to see that. And, you know, we, we brought everybody in the theater when we found out, you know, where we ranked in this, you know, global recognition program for being innovative and for having that impact and, you know, from a corporate social responsibility, you know, we're number nine on a list that Microsoft is number one, you know, I mean, it's, it's crazy. You know, Microsoft, welcome on to college, same top 10 list. Um, so, you know, again, it's easy to, you know, it, it's, it's incredible to be part of that. Um, the other community program, you know, recently we just wrapped up Rally for Restaurants. Um, and that was where, again, someone on our staff said, how do we, you know, we recognize the community impact of COVID and, you know, the restaurant, we have a culinary school. So, you know, our students still needed practice. They still needed, you know, experience. We have this wonderful dining um, dining hall, you know, the restaurant that we've, we've built out. And so we partnered with the Grant Tomorrow in the city and we rolled out this rally for restaurants where chef, local chefs came in, they, they designed the menu, but they, they taught our students along with our faculty, you know, our instructors of, you know, here's what to do. We put it on, you know, we, we opened up our space um, and we raised close to $80,000 for the restaurant community. And we also managed to still raise $17,000 for our scholarships through, you know, again, it was collective, you know, a lot of people went into that, but it started with just this crazy idea of, you know, what if we, you know, we, we have to buy the food and we have the students, so why not offer those services to the community? Um, so, you know, to me, that's something that makes us different. You know, we're focused on that social and economic impact and, you know, we get to visually see, you know, the, the results. We, we do make things happen. Mm -hmm. That is such a cool story. Um, those stories that you just told, it's um, knowing that we have a globally recognized um, educational institution right in our backyard is a huge, huge win for um, our community and the students that get an education with you, and also for the employees who work there, right? Yes. As an employee, you're always looking for that meaning in your career, knowing that you're making a difference, knowing that you're having an impact. And those stories really show the concrete proof that as an employee of Lackawanna College, you are part of something way bigger than you'll ever be able to even comprehend, right? The impact on the students' lives that you have and the impact that your programs have on the community is just outstanding. Yes, thank you. Awesome, love it. Is there anything else you wanna let job seekers know before we sign off? Um, just, you know, like I said, I spent most of my career in corporate. 
coming here you know, was easily one of the best decisions I made. And there were trade-offs, but I don't regret it for a minute. You know, we mm-hmm. truly offer the opportunity to make a difference and be something, you know, be part of something that impacts others in such a positive way. Um, you know, our president is, you know, it's a top down, but it's, it's every level, you know, we're, we're committed to having that social and economic impact in the community and we're having it. Um, you mentioned, thank you. You know, we have been recognized as a great place to work, one of the best places to work in Pennsylvania um, in six of the last seven years. You know, we've, we've got these other great programs. So I guess in closing, it's just, you know, again, we, we might be a small college, but we dream big and it takes all of us working together to make those dreams a reality. And, you know, we're on an amazing and exciting journey and uh, we're looking for people who want to be a part of that. Fantastic. And now they know exactly where to find you. They do. <laughs> So thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to come and talk with us and have this amazing conversation. I know I feel invigorated and empowered to tackle the rest of my day now after um, getting off of your passion. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Like I said, we have amazing employees. They they make my job easy. Awesome. Thank you so much um, for the conversation. I hope you have a great rest of your week. You too. Thank you.